value investing. That's what we're looking at this week. What is it, basically? Um, I, I think it's useful to just first take a step back uh, from value investing and uh, divide investors into uh, the, a, a broader camp, which is described as either being an active investor yeah. or a passive investor. Okay. An active investor is someone who believes that they can do better than the market. A passive investor believes that the market carries all of the available information and the market is what in technical language we call efficient mm -hmm. uh, in that it knows everything that is knowable <laughs> okay. and if the market is efficient that implies that it is very hard to beat the market. So passive investors concede that it is very hard to beat the market. They don't try and beat the market, they put their hands up and they join the market. Okay. So a right. passive investor is going to try and mimic uh, exactly the performance of the market and they'll do that by buying, for argument's sake, uh, a Satrix fund. Mm -hmm. uh, so Satrix 40 mimics the performance of the top 40 stocks on the JSE. So the passive investor, he or she, is not trying to call the market. They, no. they, 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 they're just, they, they're, riding, they're riding with the wave. Yeah. Okay. Um, the active investor, by contrast, says the market can be beaten. And the market can be beaten because sometimes it makes mistakes. And th th in this camp of active investors, then you get two types or two broad types of investor. The one is a value investor and the other is a growth investor. Now, this is a very crude description. Yeah, and I like crudity. <laughs> it's great. So I'm happy with that. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's fair to concede immediately that some people in the value camp will be saying, no, 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 you know, that, that, that's not a fair analogy at all. You know, you need to be far more refined. But I think just for the purpose of our discussion, it's useful to say that you know, investors belong to one of these two camps, broadly speaking. Right. Those, those are the assumptions that we're working on this evening. Sure. Right. Now, now let's go okay, into that, so now, that value. What is, what is a value investor about? A value investor, broadly speaking, is far more interested in what they can see and in what is knowable. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to compare this is to contrast it to a growth investor, with the growth investor basing their decision on what they believe is about to come. So the growth investor will be buying for the future. They will be buying a company because they think that it's got fantastic earnings growth that's going to come in the future. It has phenomenal prospects and you want to own it because of this incredible land of opportunity that lies ahead. Okay. The value investor, let's try and stick to that. So though. the value investor is going to not be concerned to anywhere near the same extent about what this promise is of the future. They will be far more interested in what they can see. And what can they see? They can see the existing earnings in the company. They understand the company's ability to generate earnings based on what it has done historically. They will want convincing evidence that those earnings aren't just accounting earnings, that they actually come in the form of cash. Mm -hmm. Very often, uh, value investors will put another constraint on their um, investment deci decision and they say, not only do I want to buy a company where the earnings are visible and knowable, I want those earnings to come to me in the form of dividends. Okay, so have I got this right? L let's take it baby steps here. The value investor is looking for dividends at the end of the year. That dividends the, is a really good point of departure. Okay, so, yes. so he's wanting to put 100 Rand into that company. Yep. And at the end of the year, he wants to know that he's going to get... Five Rand out yeah, for uh, every 100 Rand. In. Right. So yep. over 10 years, he will have recouped his initial investment. And hopefully that initial investment has grown a bit as well as the company has grown. Correct. Okay. Correct. Sure. I've got one thing right. <laughs> Jeepers, I'm doing well here. Okay, now, so then to me, it would, I would assume that the value investor, and you mentioned the word historically, yeah. he looks at how the company has performed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How, and you also alluded to this, how does he know that that performance is correct, that it's not just great accounting? I mean, how, where do you get your information from and how do you know that it's, for want of a better word, true. <laughs> well, 
Well, you know, here I think the point of dividends is a very valuable one. Warren Buffett uh, makes the point about dividends and he says when you read a company's financial statements or a company's set of accounts uh, and you page through uh, this 100 page document, he says there are only two numbers that are definitely true. He says one is the page number and the other is the dividend. <laughs> 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 the rest is the, uh, the manufacture <laughs> of uh, accounting convention. Okay. So right. dividends you can't manufacture. They either arrive in your bank account or they don't. Everything else in investing, I'll venture this, everything else in investing in terms of understanding the financials of a company is subjective and open to interpretation. Just as a matter of interest, because I know nothing about balance sheets, I can look at them and go, that looks like a balance that sheet. That looks like a balance sheet. <laughs> where would you find, if I looked at a balance sheet, where would I find the dividend? Okay, the place to look for a dividend is actually on the income statement, because dividend okay. is paid out of a company's earnings. So the first place to go is to look at a company's earnings and assess if those earnings, uh, first, are there earnings? Second, are those earnings supported by cash? In other words, uh, if a company says it has earned five rand, does it ultimately have cash flowing into its bank account to support that final five rand of earnings? And from that, they can then pay away dividends out of that five rand of earnings and cash flow. You'll get that from the income statement. And if you want to take it to a further level of analysis, you can get that from the cash flow statement. Okay. But is income statement is the place to statement. go. Income statement. Now, how do you know, and I know I may be sounding a bit negative here, but how do you know that you are, when you're buying a company based on it historically, how do you know that it's not gonna go down the tubes? Mm. Yeah, that's a great question because very often the reason why a company sits on a, a really attractive dividend uh, or dividend yield is because the share price has fallen in anticipation of the company not really doing so well in the future. Uh, mm. Take two companies. One, we have a view that the company is going to do phenomenally well and the other we think you know, not such a great prospect. And if they both start, before we change our view on these businesses, if they both start on 100 Rand share price, paying us five Rand in dividend, they both start with a 5% dividend yield. But at the end of the period, on the first company, we say this has got phenomenal prospects. We've pushed up its share price to 200 Rand. It's now on a dividend yield of two and a half percent, the five over 200. And the second company, we say, not such great prospects. The 100 Rand drops to 50 Rand, and you're now getting 5 Rand on 50 Rand, a 10% dividend yeah. yield. Yeah. Very, very different prospects. And here's your point then about, well, how do we know it's going to be sustainable? Interestingly, one of the things that management will defend in uh, the financials of a business, one of the first things that they will defend is dividend stream. They will look after this fiercely. So then, because dividend is a good signal to investors. Okay. But then surely it would, and this is another assumption I'm just making, I would then assume that if these guys are looking at companies who are undervalued on the market in the hope that the market will correct their value, yeah. that they must be cyclical buyers they, they must be trying to sure to buy at the right time sure the whole time there's there's uh, now we start to get into <laughs> the grubby part uh, of this because there's two types of what, companies that grubby part to investing <laughs> you're kidding me <laughs> there's there's two types of companies that are going to get onto very high dividend yields the first uh, company is one that actually deserves to be there it's it's in, uh, it's in decay, it can't sustain its dividend, the share price is falling, the dividend flatters it, and you, you're in a slow death, or perhaps a rapid death. But the high dividend yield is unsustainable and really just a flash in the pan as it's on its way uh, to implosion. 
The second type of company, and this is the one that the value investor is after, the second type of company is one that has been mispriced. The share price has fallen disproportionately relative to the dividend. Mm -hmm. Now what we have from the history of investing is that overwhelmingly companies that get onto very high dividend yields and that have sound financials, solid balance sheets, are mispriced by the market. And what that means is they present opportunity. And here is a very neat tool of value investing, that overwhelmingly the single greatest explainer of long run returns to investors is dividend yield. It's not capital gain, which is what the growth investor is after. The growth investor wants to buy Capitec at 10 Rand on its way to 150 Rand. Mm -hmm. The growth investor is not looking for dividends to generate their phenomenal return. They're looking for huge capital gain. Okay. When they get this right, it is an extraordinary success. But what we know from history is that on balance, almost all, 75% of long run investment returns are explained by dividend yield. And you dividend yield is stable and knowable. You mentioned Warren Buffett. Is he a value investor? I don't believe he is, no. I think that value investors have tried to claim them for, for their camp. He's not value. 